everybody, and a very warm welcome to LMT YouTube channel. Meghan Markle and Prince Harry gushed about their new life in Los Angeles as they shared candid footage of Sun Archie playing on a beach and showed off the hens they rescued from a factory farm during their interview with Oprah Winfrey. Meghan told the talk show host how their move to California was greater than any fairy tale you've ever read, after she had been left feeling suicidal while living as a senior royal in the UK. She claimed she and Harry want to live authentically and get back down to basics as they offered a rare glimpse into life in their $14.5 million mansion by showing Oprah around Archie's chicken coop. The couple's son, who turns to in May, made a cameo appearance at the end of the tell-all interview as they told the chat show host he loves their Los Angeles lifestyle and is always chatting, with his latest words being hydrate and drive safe. This came as the couple, who announced in the show they are expecting a girl in the summer accused the royal family of raising concerns about how dark Archie's skin would be before he was born and said the boy was denied 24-7 security and the title of being a prince by Buckingham Palace. Another report. Meghan Markle and Prince Harry today revealed their second child is a girl and is due to be born this summer during their Oprah Winfrey interview. The Duke and Duchess of Sussex, who now live in Montecito, California, said they are preparing to welcome a sister for their son Archie later this year. Harry joined his wife for the second half of the interview on CBS with Oprah and excitedly told the chat show host, it's a girl. He said his first thought was amazing when he learned they were having a girl, adding, just grateful. To have any child, any one or any two, would have been amazing. But to have a boy and then a girl, I mean what more can you ask for? Now we've got our family, we got the four of us, and our two dogs. Asked if they were done with two children. Harry said done and Meghan said, two is it. She also confirmed the baby is due in the summertime. The couple announced, on Valentine's Day last month, that they are expecting a second child, saying they were overjoyed at their pregnancy. If born in the US, the baby will be entitled to US citizenship as an automatic right. To celebrate the news last month, the couple released a black and white photograph which showed them beaming with delight. Meghan lay with her head in her husband's lap, her hand resting, on her visible baby bump. Barefoot Harry cradled her head in his hand as the couple relaxed together under a tree on a sprawling sunlit lawn. The picture was shot by photographer Mizzen Harriman, a friend of the Duke and Duchess. It was believed to have been taken in Montecito, California, where the pair now live after deciding to leave Britain and step down from their roles in the royal family. A spokesman for the couple said at the time, we can confirm that Archie is going to be a big brother. The Duke and Duchess of Sussex are overjoyed to be expecting their second child. The announcement comes after Meghan suffered a heartbreaking miscarriage last year. Harry is expected to return to the UK this summer to see his family for the first time since Megxit. According to sources, Meghan was already said to be unlikely to join him for personal and practical reasons. Mr. Harriman said last month that being asked to take the photograph felt especially poignant after the Duchess's miscarriage. He said to be asked to help share this absolute joy after such an unimaginable loss and heartache is a marker of true friendship. Meghan reminded me that had I not introduced her to a mutual friend, then she wouldn't have met Harry. I'm grateful for whatever small part I played. The couple announced they were expecting a second baby on Valentine's Day 2021. It came almost exactly 37 years after Princess Diana was confirmed to be pregnant with her second child, Prince Harry. Buckingham Palace made that announcement on February 13, 1984, but waited until the interview to reveal the gender of the child. They have not announced a name. Harry and Meghan chose to put out a statement themselves on Valentine's Day in keeping with their decision to move away from their traditional roles within the royal family. In what appeared to be a hastily prepared response, Buckingham Palace said that Her Majesty, the Duke of Edinburgh, the Prince of Wales and the entire family were delighted. It is understood the royal family had been told in advance of the announcement. But it was not clear how much notice they were given, and it was clear that palace staff had been left in the dark. The new Sussex baby will become eighth in line to the throne, after Prince Charles, Prince William, William's three children George, Charlotte and Louis, Prince Harry and Archie Mountbatten Windsor. Harry retained his place in the line of succession despite his decision to quit royal life. 
Harry, Meghan and Archie left Britain for Canada in November 2019, meaning Archie has not seen any of his British relatives since he was six months old. They then moved to California, where they have bought a $14.3 million mansion and signed multi-million pound deals with internet streaming companies, including Netflix and Spotify. Harry previously said in an interview with Vogue in August 2019 that he planned to have two children in context of his increasing concerns for the environment and future of the world. Harry says he is disappointed by his father. In a particularly revealing moment, Harry revealed that he will always love his father, Prince Charles, but he is disappointed by him. Harry started out by saying they had never planned to make the Netflix and Spotify deals, but the royal family literally cut me off financially in the first quarter of 2020. He said he thought his mother saw it coming. Harry said, I'm just really relieved and happy to be sitting here talking to you with my wife by my side, because I can't begin to imagine what it must have been like for her going through this process by herself. It's been unbelievably tough for the two of us, but at least we have each other. As for the rest of his family, he said he has spoken more this year to his grandmother than he has in many, many years, and they have a really good relationship. When asked about his father, Harry paused. He said his father is now taking his calls, but there's a lot to work through there. Harry said, I feel really let down because he's been through something similar and he knows what pain feels like and Archie's his grandson. But at the same time, of course I will always love him but there's a lot of hurt that's happened and I will continue to make it one of my priorities to try and heal that relationship. But they only know what they know and that's the thing. I've tried to, I've tried to educate them through the process that they've been educated. Harry said much will continue to be said about his relationship with William. Harry said, As I've said before, I love William to bits, he's my brother and we've been through hell together and we have a shared experience, but we're on different paths. Harry said he never going to share more about the conversation, about Archie's skin tone, only saying it was right at the beginning. Both Harry and Meghan said that if they had the support, without question they would have stayed working members of the family. Harry said, I'm sad what has happened has happened, but I'm comfortable knowing we have done everything we could to make it work. To people who would say they were money-grubbing royals, he said first off, this was never our intention. He said, from my perspective, all I needed was enough money to pay for security to keep my family safe. We did what we had to do, Harry and Meghan wrap up their exclusive interview with Oprah. In the final moments of their groundbreaking interview, Harry and Meghan discussed their different regrets with the iconic host, but both said they remained grateful that they made it out to the other side. Meghan told Oprah that her regret was believing that the royal family would protect her, something she said would have made all the difference. If they had protected us, Harry said, we wouldn't have left. However, Harry also said that his relationship with Meghan saved him, while Meghan disagreed, instead saying, that Harry's decision saved their entire family. Harry said, We did what we had to do. Another analysis. Is Prince Harry actually more difficult to work for than Meghan Markle? Prince Harry and Meghan, Duchess of Sussex, officially stepped down from royal duties on March 31, 2020, and have been residing in California ever since. But even though they left royal life behind reports and allegations from across the pond about what it was like working for the pair have continued to swirl. Here's more on that and why some have claimed that the Duke of Sussex may be more difficult to work with than the former suit star. Meghan was dubbed Duchess Difficult. You may have seen tabloid stories dubbing Meghan Duchess Difficult. Tom Quinn, author of Kensington Palace, an intimate memoir from Queen Mary to Meghan Markle, revealed who gave Harry's bride that nickname. Tom said, The British press are famously good at taking someone and building them up and saying they're absolutely wonderful. And then, when that story runs out of steam, they need something else so they then come up with the opposite. They run that person down. The nicknames were picked up by the press and used against Meg. And they did, in fact, come from the palace. Quinn noted that palace workers described the Duchess of Sussex as spiky and feisty. She reportedly yelled at Kate Middleton's staffers too. Other allegations were brought up recently about Meghan's apparent mistreatment of her sister-in-law's staffers. Tom spoke to sources who told him that the Duchess of Sussex shouted at a member of Catherine, Duchess of Cambridge's staff, 
In his book, Quinn writes that Kate was horrified when Megan shouted at a member of Kate's staff that was definitely the beginning of discussions about leaving Kensington Palace. The former aide explained, Like many people not used to dealing with servants, Megan overdoes the imperiousness, so on the one hand she wants to be like Diana, a people's princess, and on the other she wants people to stand to attention when she clicks her fingers. Harry fought with Queen Elizabeth's aide over Meghan's wedding tiara. But there are reports that at times Prince Harry has been very demanding and more difficult to please than his wife. In Finding Freedom, Harry and Meghan and the Making of a Modern Royal Family, journalists Amid Scobby and Carolyn Duran discuss the Sussexes' relationship and rifts with other royals including a rumored clash between Meghan and Queen Elizabeth II when the Duchess chose her wedding tiara. The authors claim that there were disagreements but not with Meghan and the Queen. According to the book, the conflict was between Harry and his grandmother's dressmaker Angela Kelly. Scobby and Durand wrote that Harry was upset with Kelly because he felt like she was dragging her feet in helping Meghan obtain access to her chosen tiara for a hair trial. Before the wedding. Royal expert Robert Jobson also weighed, and on this subject via Yahoo! News Royal Box. Jobson opined. I don't think Meghan was being difficult when she was picking out a tiara, I think Harry was probably being overly defensive and overly protective. Despite the tension between Harry and Kelly, the hair trial went forward with no objection or hesitation from the Queen. Check out one of our newest videos right here, plus even more LMT videos about your favorite stuff. For coming soon subscribe to our YouTube channel and hit the bell so you don't miss a single one. Stop.